I did want to mention a couple things about the scope of the seminar. Uh, we'll, we'll be discussing vibration design for human comfort and vibration design for sensitive equipment. And we'll focus on vibration of floors, not footbridges, although I'll mention footbridges in a couple instances as we go along. We'll focus mainly on vibrations due to human activity, such as walking and exercising, running, say on a running track or aerobics and so on. And the vibration sources that we're going to deal with are generally those that occur within the structure, not vibration sources that are coming from outside the structure like traffic or trains. Now, I've listed these sort of um, limitations on what we're going to talk about. But I will say that given the basis of what we're going to talk about, it's not too much more of a leap to understand uh, some of these other topics that I've mentioned here. All right, let's get started. Uh, the first question to ask uh, or to understand once you decide to delve into a topic is why am I spending time studying this topic? And each of you have your individual reasons for signing up for this seminar today. Uh, but I like to point out some of the reasons I believe that floor vibrations are a really important topic and is, is becoming uh, uh, more important as time goes by. It's an important serviceability limit state, uh, meaning if you have a structure that has vibrations that are excessive, you're simply not going to have a usable structure. And we've seen that over and over again in practice. Uh, it seems that clients are more aware of their vibration limits. That is, we're getting more clients asking us to limit vibrations uh, uh, proactively during the planning stages for new design. And also, if someone's leasing a new structure, they sometimes go into um, uh, questions about vibrations. Uh, and those may generate specific vibration criteria. The thing about vibration problems is they're very difficult and can be very expensive to fix. So it's better to head them off during design or during a transition between one tenant and another tenant. We've seen changes of uses in buildings, uh, switching, say, from office building to uh, biotech research. I'll show an example of that later this morning. Um, and so we're seeing more interest in vibrations for more sensitive occupancies than the structure was already built for. Um, we do a lot of field evaluation of existing conditions for existing structures that are being reused for uh, biotechnology in particular uses. And with the advent of stronger materials, more slender structures, that naturally leads to more vibration potential. So these are all reasons why I think it's really important to address this topic. And then just briefly, uh, we're talking about today about buildings. And there are two kinds of vibration problems that can occur, and we're going to address both of them. One is the comfort of humans. And on the right there, you see various occupancies or activities that might be going on in a building that might require different levels of vibration performance. For instance, a workshop, an industrial workshop, has a very sort of high tolerance for vibrations in that environment. Whereas when you get down to laboratories with electron microscopes and so on, the tolerances are, are many orders of magnitude lower than for uh, more lively areas. Sensitive equipment falls into the category generally of laboratories and medical equipment, magnetic resonance imaging equipment, NMR, CAT scan machines, microscopes, uh, both optical and electron microscopes. Microchip production is a very highly vibration sensitive um, uh, activity. Uh, pharmaceutical production, crystal growth, and so on, and microbalances. All these things require very high vibration uh, uh, tolerances. I do want to distinguish right away from the beginning here, and, and I know uh, you are probably aware of this distinction, but it's important one that I feel to explain to your client when you're talking about vibrations, what you're dealing with as a vibration consultant. What you're dealing with is what's shown on the left here, structural vibrations. Those generally have frequencies in actually in the 1 hertz to uh, maybe as high as 30 hertz range. It would be rare that you would really care about any vibration in your structure higher than about 30 hertz. Um, these are transmitted through the structure or through the ground. That's how the vibrations are getting into an area that may have, say, sensitive equipment or, or uh, humans that are, are being 
uh, bothered by excessive vibrations. And structural vibrations are manifest by physical effects, that's shaking, uh, nausea or, or discomfort in a person, or blurred images, say, in an in a, uh, uh, electron microscope image. That's to distinct from acoustic vibrations. 